Workers up and down the coast are still struggling to remove millions of tons of debris. The government's goal is to transfer 22 million tons of waste from disaster-hit areas to temporary storage sites by the end of next March. But Environment Ministry spokespersons say about 7 million tons, one-third of the total debris, still needs to be hauled away. They say the main reason for the delay is the time it takes to demolish damaged buildings. The government needs to get approval from building owners and prevent asbestos from entering the environment when it destroys the structures. The ministry plans to build incinerators to burn the debris that has been collected. Spokespersons say it is difficult to prepare the land where these facilities could be built. The March 11th earthquake and tsunami continues to harm businesses in the affected areas in northeastern Japan. The fishery catch through October in the worst hit regions was down 70% from the same period last year. A government survey compiled information from the seven months between April and October. The three prefectures of Iwate, Miyagi and Fukushima are close to one of the world's largest fishing grounds in the Pacific Ocean. But fishing ports in these prefectures were badly damaged by the earthquake and tsunami. The total catch landed by eight major ports during the surveyed period was a little over 64,000 tons. This is down 70% from a year ago. Fishermen in Fukushima Prefecture have voluntarily stopped fishing in waters nearby due to the nuclear power plant accident. Hey guys, welcome to Radiation Test. And uh, a friend of mine on YouTube shared a video with me that was uh, pretty disturbing. So what I did was I contacted the gentleman in Japan that made this video and uh, I asked for his permission to make a video to uh, look at what uh, he had found. And uh, he gave me the okay. He has a dosimeter, which is basically like a Geiger counter, except it uh, it records a dose over time and records it in there, so you accumulated dose over time. He takes this Geiger counter or his dosimeter, moves it over to a, a fish that he bought at the local supermarket, and uh, watch what happens. This is a fish that's being sold to men, women, and children. And uh, it's pretty much a uh, radioactive waste, guys. The Japanese government is uh, is not doing an adequate job in protecting their people at all. And uh, the Japanese government uh, is pretty much doing all they can to have business as usual go on. And uh, over on my blog, uh, there's a link to a, a friend of mine, uh, William Milberry. He's living in Japan right now, and he done a video on food safety in Japan and he was looking at how the Japanese government is uh, dealing with this situation and uh, pretty much what he discovered was the Japanese government is doing very little to protect consumers from radioactive isotopes and they're doing everything they can to maintain the business as usual and uh, in one of my previous videos I evaluated, I, uh, evaluated an FDA document yeah you see that there's the label. But I evaluated an FDA document and uh, it clearly shows that the FDA and the federal government is allowing uh, food products from Japan to be imported over here including dairy. Uh, and also over on my blog there's a link to uh, an interview with Marco Kaltofen and in that interview Marco Kaltofen uh, uh, clearly states that the FDA is doing very little to find radioactive contamination in food. I just wanted to point out if there was any doubt whether or not uh, Geiger counters and dosometers can detect radioactive contamination in food, well 148 production clearly demonstrated that uh, you can indeed detect high levels of contamination in our food. Uh, thanks for tuning in to Radiation Test. And uh, we're going to be doing all we can to find this type of product on the market. Charlie? Yeah? What's that? Art.
You see, guys with good taste dig this stuff. How come? Who knows? I think all that good taste confuses them. Now, wait till Starkist sees this. But Charlie, Starkist don't want tunas with good taste. Starkist wants tunas that taste good. Here they are. Sorry, Charlie. Only good tasting tuna get to be Starkist. Good tasting 100% prime fillet. Boy, this is good tasting tuna. Get Starkist tuna. Note the name. Starkist. Hey, Lassie. Have you seen me treasure? Treasure? This is chicken of the sea. It's the best tuna you'll find in any port. Mm. Mm. So, now that you've found me treasure, have you any booty for me? Oh, no, no, sorry. I, oh, I, I thought um, you meant... I didn't... I wasn't trying okay. to imply... Uh... Ask any mermaid you happen to see What's the best tuna chicken of the sea? A nuclear submarine has caught fire at a shipyard in Russia. Workers were able to get it under control. Emergency ministry spokespersons say no radiation leaked out and no one was hurt. The Yekaterinburg submarine was docked for repairs in a port off the Arctic Ocean. Investigators believe wooden scaffolding caught fire, sending smoke plumes into the air. The flames engulfed the submarine's outer hull. Workers fought for more than seven hours to put them out. Ministry spokespersons say the vessel was not armed and its reactor was shut down. The submarine has been docked in Murmansk since early December for regular maintenance. It test-fired ballistic missiles in April and July.